From TLDR News, this is your daily briefing for Wednesday the 7th of September. Good afternoon. Today we're going to be talking about Liz Truss's new cabinet, as well as discussing three of the other most important news stories around the world today. Yesterday, Liz Truss became the UK's 56th Prime Minister, and having travelled up to Balmoral to kiss hands with the Queen, Truss was quick to get to work, replacing her cabinet, government ministers, within hours of touching down in London. And it became immediately clear that Truss had no time for those who backed her fellow leadership contender, Rishi Sunak. Dominic Raab, Grant Shapps and Steve Barclay, all of whom held high positions in the previous cabinet and were also major backers of Rishi, were out within hours. And the first actual appointment came just before 7pm, when Therese Coffey, a longtime ally and friend of Truss, was appointed as Secretary of State for Health and Social Care, as well as the new Deputy Prime Minister. From that point onwards, appointments came thick and fast, with few, if any, actual surprises. Kwasi Kwarteng, the former business secretary, and you guessed it, long-time ally, friend, and even neighbour of Truss, was, as suspected, appointed as the Chancellor of the Exchequer. James Cleverly got the job of Secretary of State for Foreign, Commonwealth and Development Affairs, while Suella Braverman got Pretty Patel's old job, Home Secretary. And the appointment of these people, Kwarteng, Cleverly and Braverman, ultimately means that none of the so-called great offices of state were occupied by a white man for the first time in Britain's history. Beyond the great offices, Wendy Morton was appointed as Chief Whip, Ben Wallace stayed on as Defence Secretary, and Penny Mordaunt became the leader of the House of Commons. And it's at this point that Truss seemingly made her first enemy as Prime Minister, the wife of former Veterans Minister Johnny Mercer. But let's not get into that right now. There was then a brief lull in the announcements while Truss spoke to Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky, and then to US President Joe Biden. Once those calls were completed, the appointments restarted with a bang in the form of Jacob Rees-Mogg being appointed as Secretary of State for Business, Energy and Industrial Strategy. Kemi Badenoch was then rewarded for running in the leadership race and subsequently supporting Truss with her first cabinet position in the form of International Trade Secretary. The final big announcement was Michelle Donnellan, who you might remember for holding the job as Education Secretary for... Well, about the duration of a TikTok. Anyway, her new role is set to be Digital Culture, Media and Sports Secretary, replacing Johnson loyalist Nadine Dorries. Anyway, this reshuffle as a whole has been so loyalist-focused that Conservative Home, a blog targeted at and popular with Conservative Party members, termed it the ABBA reshuffle, where the winner takes it all. However, not everyone's convinced it will work, even with this cluster of friends in number 10. In fact, the Times newspaper reported that one of her cabinet ministers has already said that they doubt she'll last two years. So instead of the winner takes it all, maybe people should be crying out SOS instead. Okay, so that's the biggest story of the day, but there's a lot more going on around the world. So here's a rundown of the other three stories. Some 15 years after scrapping it, Latvia has moved one step closer to bringing back military conscription, as tensions between the country and Russia continue to grow. Having floated the idea back in July, Latvia's government gave conceptual support to formally bringing back conscription yesterday. And once Latvia's parliament gives final sign-off on the measure, conscription could be back in force as early as next year, and apply to all men aged between 18 and 27. In a statement, Latvia's defence ministry stressed that this is a historic moment when the government has supported a fundamental issue necessary for strengthening national security and uniting society. The purpose of introducing the National Defence Service is to increase the number of military prepared and trained population so that Latvia will never experience the horrors of war that the Ukrainian people are now experiencing. There's more on the way, but be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to make the daily briefing part of your everyday routine.
or you can just search for us in your podcast app to listen along. Let's move over to the US, where Juul has agreed to pay nearly $440 billion in order to settle a two-year-long investigation by 30 US states into teen vaping. And as part of the settlement, the e-cigarettes manufacturer will also face restrictions in their marketing campaigns, notably facing a ban on the use of people under the age of 35 within their ads. The investigation alleges that Juul's dominance within the market came about due to, quote, willfully engaging in an advertising campaign that appealed to the youth. Confirming the settlement, Juul stressed that this was a significant part of their ongoing commitment to resolve issues from the past, following a strategic reset in late 2019. While this settlement does conclude one legal headache for the company, Back in June, the Food and Drug Administration announced a ban on the sale of all products sold by Juul, although a federal appeals court have temporarily blocked the ban. All in all then, it doesn't look like Juul are out of the woods just yet. Finally today, Netflix has seemingly landed itself in hot water yet again. In a joint statement by Saudi Arabia's media regulator and the Gulf Cooperation Council, six Gulf states have threatened Netflix with legal action if it continues to broadcast content that, quote, contradicts Islamic and societal values. The statement noted that the platform had been contacted to remove all of this content and that the regional authorities would follow up on the platform's compliance with the directives. The Gulf Cooperation Council, which includes the likes of Bahrain, Kuwait, Oman, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, and the UAE, did not point to any specific examples of content that was in violation of Islamic and societal values, but media reports in Saudi Arabia suggested that issues arose due to, quote, movies and series for children, which included scenes promoting homosexuality. Netflix didn't immediately respond to comment on this issue, but we'll have to wait and see how they respond to this rather interesting complaint. That's all we've got time for today, but you can get more from TLDR on all of our other channels. You can just search for TLDR News on YouTube and you'll find a ton of other stuff, including our recent TLDR business videos on how Netflix is killing itself, which might be interesting to the final story we just covered. Anyway, I'll see you tomorrow. Nebula subscribers not only get everything you've already watched ad-free, but also get an extended version of the show every single weekday. Available to watch on Nebula or to stream on your podcast app of choice. So if you want to support the channel and get an even more extensive briefing every day, then you'll want to sign up. And there's good news. Our friends at Curiosity Stream, the streaming service with some of the world's best documentaries, is offering a deal whereby you can get both platforms, Curiosity Stream and Nebula, for less than $15 a year. That's all the documentaries you could want on Curiosity Stream, and then more TLDR on Nebula, including the extended briefing, other full exclusive TLDR videos. And, well, it's always ad-free, too. Click the link below to get both services for less than $15 a year and support the channel.